Many times, if you're looking for what the news has to say about the real estate market in general, it's typically doom and gloom. Now that interest rates have dropped, what are the expectations as far as the DFW Metroplex, as far as prices? What happens if you wait? What happens if you hold? Are you considering buying or selling? Well, let's get into this information. Well, hopefully after this video, you're gonna have a better idea. My name's Trevon, I work with Century 21 Mike Bowman, and I'm in the uh, DFW Metroplex. Check out this graph we have here on my left. This is going to be some headlines from Diana Click, the host on CNBC. And yeah, she is, many of her headlines, I would say, would either push you away from the real estate market or definitely cause you some fear or FOMO. Now, I understand that the news, they're supposed to generally go over broad data. So maybe they see the macro information and it might seem like it's not the best time to buy. But many times, as you can see here on the left, I mean, think if there's so many people that regret not buying in 2016 or, or, or oh wait, home ownership doesn't build wealth. Studies fine in 2017. Well, dude, if you bought a home in 2017, most likely you'd be selling for um, an absurd amount, basically, um, as far as appreciation game in real estate. So throughout this video, I'm just going to go over some key stats of what to expect and what's going to happen kind of in the DFW Metroplex. That way you can kind of get an idea um, of your game plan. Maybe you move quicker, maybe you slow down, depending on what you're trying to do. Okay, so let's go over a few details to kind of smash down this housing bubble situation that we have going on and talks we have. Yes, of course, there's going to be some markets, LA, New York, where there ain't no space, right? If your home price is above 5 million for a four bedroom, yeah, you're gonna have fluctuations in prices, okay? Uh, let's take population versus inventory. You see here on the left, back in 2007, population was around 301 million. Inventory was at 4 million. So the moment that basically a major financial situation happened, there were so many homes on the market compared to the population. And even then, what would have happened if you would have bought a home in this time period and you tried to sell now? You'd most likely be selling for double, triple, or four times the value in some of these areas. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see this. All you have to do is, let's say you were looking to buy a home, check the history, see when they bought it, see what they bought it for. Now, of course, they could have made upgrades and things like this, but the idea is the appreciation value of holding assets. And now let's jump forward to the present day population skyrocketed all the way up at 340 million inventory is being inventory has been obliterated inventory is down at 1.3 million so it's not a bubble in the idea of a housing bubble but there are not enough houses for the amount of people so you just have to look at supply and demand the demand is high the supply is low prices will probably stay around the same or continue to rise as we saw in the graph behind me. I'll put it up here real quick. Are these homes that they're building affordable? That's another question, right? Under 300, you're seeing more homes being built under the 300s, okay? Yes, they're going to be in the outer areas, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes from major cities, maybe even closer, but there are still opportunities out there. If you're someone who's looking for a home under 300, shoot me a text or a call, and I can show you some of the DFW Metroplex. Okay, so now if you're buying, selling, trying to rent, trying to think of your real estate or trying to think of your housing situation as far as the DFW Metroplex, and you're someone on the fence, will prices continue to go down? Will it still be a good time to buy as far as your time frame? I just want to show you a few stats that will help you clear up some of those questions. Of course, every house is going to be different because it really truly depends on the neighborhood, location, and the seller's intentions and goals. But we're going to start with population growth. So basically, as population continues to grow, more people are going to come into these areas. So the areas that are already developed, you're going to still see people that want to move into these areas. And then you're going to see people still move outwards who still want an opportunity to own a specific type of home um, as far as new construction. But this is going to give you an idea of how many people are expected to be moving to the area. Back in 2000, we had about 5 million people. Uh, jump forward 10 years, 
population growth went up to 6.5 million people. Now in 2024, population's cranking up. Now in 2024, population's around 8.4 million. But based on the data, it's going to continue to rise. 2030, we're expected to have a population of 9.5 million. And then in 2050, a population of 11.6 million. So we are having people move to the area and it is not slowing down anytime soon. I've already done a video on it as far as how many apartment units we're developing. Three less units than New York City by the end of 2024. So it's coming, man. It's coming. That's going to be pre that's going to bring people it's going to bring more infrastructure and it's also going to bring more demand and then if you go into supply versus demand again when there's low supply and there's still high demand prices will go up based on this info people are coming um, if you're looking to buy right now and you think prices will go lower i think you really should I think you should I, I think you really should be specific on where you're looking because there's many of because many of the areas are in the top 50 of growing US markets, which just means more people are going to want to get into some of these specific areas. So if you're looking in a Bedford or if you're looking in a Flower Mound or if you're looking in a Frisco or McKinney Allen, you probably will face more competition uh, than other areas. All right, so the next graph I'm going to show you is buying now versus buying later if you're someone on the fence. And even if you're someone selling, this will kind of give you an idea of what waiting a year could do for you. Because I do get this question a lot. Is it better to buy now or waiting later? And this graph will kind of help illustrate that idea across. So for this scenario, we're going to use a home price at 700K. You can see here on the left, you buy now, you close at 700K. Your mortgage payment's around 4,500 a month. Now we jump forward. So let's say you want to wait a year based on the average appreciation gain, you'd be paying around 732,000. Your mortgage though would be around four, uh, 4,300. So on your, you wait a year, you pay $200 less, but in all you basically pay about $25,000 more. So what would you rather do in this scenario? If you could buy right now, would you choose to go in now? Or would you choose to wait a year hoping that interest rates go lower than they already are? Maybe they will, maybe they won't, but they did just cut. What happens if you wait? And the idea here is appreciation gain. I mean, throughout history, yes, we've seen home prices fluctuate, but in general, they typically go up, you know, like they typically go up. And this isn't to put FOMO out there. It's just to show you what the statistics are. Overall, I really think their DFW Metroplex is uh, strong and healthy. If you're someone that's on the fence about buying or, you know, getting that starter home or getting land, I really think it's a solid time based on what's coming to the area as far as commercial development, housing, uh, new construction, and just uh, population growth in general. Yes, you need to do some research ahead of your journey. You really want to try to ask as many questions as you can because yeah, you, you really won't know if you don't ask. Now, if you're selling same instance, you're going to get an idea that yes, maybe if you're not getting the price that you want now, maybe if you bought in 2022 or 2021 and you over and you overpaid for your home, maybe this is a time to realize that it's time to wait a little bit, maybe turn it into a rental if you possibly can. But but appreciation will come most likely. Yes, in some of these outer areas, it may take a little more time. But eventually, it's all going to connect. If you made it this far, I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions in the future or now, in the description will be my email and contact phone number. Uh, shoot me a call or text, whatever is best for you. Uh, but yeah, if you made it this far, I really appreciate you watching. Again, my name is Trevon. I work with Century 21 Mike Bowman. And I will see you guys in the next video. All right, later. Century 21 Real Estate. Move fearlessly.